welcome to our weekly webinar here at Route Consultant. Hope you're having a great week. I am fresh off the plane from Las Vegas from our annual Contractor Expo. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, kind of recapping that and looking ahead to what we've got uh, coming up in the next year for all of you. My name is Jesse Smith. If you've not seen me on here before, I'm the Director of Operations Training here at Route Consultant. I've got about 20 years of experience in the FedEx ground space, and I'm, I'm bringing all of that blood, sweat, and tears to our brokerage and consulting teams here at Route Consultant to deliver great content for you guys week in and week out. If you've been here with us before, welcome back to all of our new people. We're glad you found us. We hope you find this webinar to be fun, helpful, educational, informative, all of the things we're glad you're here today. Now, we do try to educate you about things in the FedEx ground space, but in the wider logistics industry today, we're going to talk about the UPS strike a little bit. So anything that's even remotely tangential to FedEx ground, we're going to talk about it here uh, on these webinars. Before I have, uh, where we talk about all things uh, Expo and FedEx ground, I've got to read a quick disclaimer. So let me go ahead and get that out of the way. Rao Consultant is not endorsed by and is not recommended by Federal Express Corporation, FedEx Ground, or Amazon. Rao Consultant is not sponsored by, is not approved by, is not associated with, and has no connection whatsoever with Federal Express Corporation, FedEx Ground, or Amazon. Now, as you know, if you've been here before, we have a weekly tradition where we're going to have a Q&A time later, and we want all of your questions but before you can ask us a question, we need you to answer a question for us. Today's question of the day, which again, if you put a question in, uh, you need to answer this question for us first, okay? This week's question is sweet tea, unsweet tea, or Arnold Palmer? If you're not sure what that is, I feel sorry for you because I'm just going to give you a hint. That's going to be my answer is the Arnold Palmer. So what is your choice? Sweet tea, unsweet tea, or Arnold Palmer? Let us know. Uh, when you put your question in the Q&A before you ask your question, and we'll make sure to get to that. Now, speaking of the Q&A, if you do want to submit a question for us to answer, me and my co-host, we will do that at the end. Make sure you use the Q&A feature and not the chat button. So just at the bottom, you should see a little button down there, down there that says Q&A. If you put it in the chat, we may not see it. We also try to reserve that for our announcements and links to events and things like that. So use that QA feature to ask us a question. You can type those in at any time, and we'll get to those at the end. Upcoming events. Let's hit those real quick. So in just a couple of weeks, we've got our next in-person new investor summit. That's going to be here uh, in Nashville at our home office. So if you're a new investor looking at the space, looking to get in, whether you're line hall focused or P&D focused, whichever kind of business you want, we'll have information for you here at our home office in Nashville, August 14th and 15th. A few days after that, in August 17th, we have a happy hour for networking out in Denver. So if you're out in that area, come see us uh, in Denver on August 17th for a happy hour. And then the last thing this month, on August 28th, we have a line hall only summit. So this is a one day only event that we have these every so often, just specifically for our line hall potential investors. A lot of times the, the, the two day summits, they sometimes tend to get dominated with more P&D content just because there's so much more to know in terms of boots on the ground operations when it comes to P&D. But if you're line hall interested, then come to our one day only event, August 28th. And that's going to be, I believe, here at home office. Uh, if I'm wrong, then uh, John will correct that and, and put this in the chat for you guys. But uh, come see us at the end of the month if you're interested in line home. One more thing before we get into our content today, let's go over the new inventory that we have. We have three new listings. They're all P&D. We don't have any brand new line hall today, but we do have three new P&D. The first two are in, in northern Alabama. So let's talk about these. The first one is a 10 P&D route operation valued at $1,050,000. This has a 25% EBITDA margin there. One manager oversees DRO and contingency planning. 12 trucks with two spares. And if you want to own a profitable operation in a rapidly growing territory, uh, we have a, they have a fleet of trucks comprised of both owned and leased vehicles. And um, the leased contracts can be assumed. So if you're interested in a mixed fleet of both leased and owned, this might be one for you. The CSA covers dense routes averaging 52 daily miles. 
So that's pretty good in terms of keeping your repair and maintenance costs down. If you're on something that's fairly close to the terminal, this might be a good option. Then we have a second one, also 10 p and routes in Northern Alabama. This one's a 23% margin. One manager, 11 trucks from this one, a strong fleet of trucks, including newly leased 2022 models. The territory has seen rapid and continuous growth year over year. It cover, also covers dense routes, just like the other one. And assumable truck debt on this is an option. Our last one here is out of Northern Georgia. 11 P&D routes, and this one's at a 16% EBITDA margin. One manager with 17 years of experience in the industry. That is a lot for this space. 12 trucks come with this one. The fleet is comprised of newer models. It's a very well-run operation. Comes with a contractor who himself has 15 years of experience. The territory is located in a safe and growing area. Features dense routes with an average of 70 daily miles. This one is a really good remote ownership opportunity if that's something that you're looking for. That's our new inventory today. As I said, nothing new on the line hall front today. So let's launch into our content. So we're going to recap everything Expo today. If you missed it, you really missed a good one this year. We were less attended this year than last year. If you remember last year, we had all the excitement around Purple Friday and just the kind of the, the growing um, you know, match, as, as everyone saw it, between Spencer and FedEx, right? And just a lot of anticipation, a lot of drama there that, that really drew a lot of people. And this year, it was just a really nice, relaxed vibe. We had a lot of people that were there just really to get into the networking and, and to hear all the content that we had. And we had a lot of new brand making new content that we brought to everybody. I had so much fun. Um, bring on my co-host here in a second. I got to share a lot of sessions with him as well. Very enjoyable expo. If I if I saw you there, please uh, say hi uh, in, in the Q&A. Make sure to, to let me know. I'm good with names and I'm good with faces. I'm just not good with putting them together. So if we talked and you want to say hi, please let me know and remind me where I saw you at, at the expo. So again, we're going to talk about some of our big sessions we had today. We're going to talk about express integration, which we just absolutely blew, blew the doors off of that session. Uh, we had to cap it and not let anybody else in. So if you wanted to come to the expo to, to hear that session, but you weren't able to, uh, we have some good news there. All of our sessions were recorded. So if you go to routeconsultantexpo.com, you can find links there. Uh, you will have to sign up uh, and just get a free account there, and you, you'll be able to watch all of our content from the expo from this past weekend in Las Vegas. I'm going to go ahead and bring on my co-host today. This, again, you've seen him before. This is my old man, Greg Smith, my partner in crime in this industry. So, Dad, if you want to go ahead and come on um, and just kind of give everybody a quick recap uh, of your of your story and how you got into this for those of you who may not know and there's your answer to the question <laughs> for later so dad how's it going fantastic i got my so this is not one of the choices but you know me i always outside the box right son this is my subtly sweet tea so i don't know where that falls in but anyway, I'll, I'll give you my answer I will, yeah just like me i have an opinion about everything i will give you an opinion on this wow i am uh, you can tell by the way i'm talking fast and loud right i am still just absolutely juiced from our time in the, in Vegas, um, man, just what a great four days. We, we got to be out there a couple of days early and, and just enjoy, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, potential investors and just got to see it all. Wow. We just really loved it. Um, unfortunately, so, so those of you that came that, uh, I got your name, I scanned your badge. Um, and, but I, I found out Jesse, I don't know about yours, but all the, I know there's a lot of people that I scanned that it didn't end up showing up on my phone. So, I don't know. I know there's a trouble with uh, some Wi-Fi issues throughout the weekend, so that may have caused it not to download. But if I saw you there, like Jesse, let me know. Um, Several so you said, "Yeah, we listen to you on the webinar regularly," and that's just uh, it's, and that that's the funnest part, isn't it, son? We get to put faces with names at the expo. It's like a it's like Christmas, the Super Bowl, and, and a family reunion all rolled into one. Is kind of how I explain it to people. And so it was great to see you there. Hope to see you at a road show. Um, hope to see you uh, in Dallas next year, but uh, what a great time. Thanks for making, thanks for making a great couple of days for us. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very well said. Dad, we shared a lot of sessions at the expo. We had four, actually five, if you count the kind of the pre-expo event that we did. We had a lot of time on stage together. It was a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about some of those content sessions today. 
But, you know, our theme here at the Expo was unbox the possibilities, literally thinking outside the box and not just kind of getting around, wrapped around the wheel of what FedEx is going to do next. And that's where we talk with a lot of contractors that, you know, whether it's at the Expo or, or before that, whereas we kind of just try to network with people, a lot of people kind of get wrapped around the wheel and around the axle of, man, whatever FedEx says, they're kind of just hanging on the next word. And I get it, right? This is a big investment that a lot of us have made into, into our businesses. So it, it makes sense on the one hand, but on the other hand, when you kind of get to see the, the Kevin O'Leary's and you talk about these, these other people at the expo that are giving you opportunities to, to diversify into bread routes and things like this, it kind of opens your eyes to, man, there's a lot more things I can do. There's, there's life after FedEx. There's life besides FedEx, right? And, and we're living proof of that. And so I think that's one reason that I, in particular, really enjoyed this year, Dad. I know the same for you. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not in operations anymore. So we really got to, instead of, you know, hitting the ground running like we did last year with drivers and managers calling us the whole time, we really got to unplug and truly, to borrow the phrase, we got to unbox the possibilities this year. Yeah. Yeah, I just love what Kevin O'Leary said. You could tell he and Spencer had spent some time together um, before the expo, just kind of, you know, Kevin O'Leary. I mean, you know, I just can't put enough thumbs up for his uh, for his talk. It was it was captivating. It was funny. It was uh, um, it was rude, a little bit rude at time. And he just is, you know, it's it's Mr. Wonderful, right? Unplugged right there in front of us. But I guess the thing that I liked at the very end, Jesse, he really boiled it down to you know, hey, guys, you've got all these trucks. How can you find ways to use those to their maximum efficiency on those days where you, they're not full? What else can you put in them? You own them. They're yours. They're your business. So I, I just thought that was fast. I never really thought about that in a way, except when people call us and ask if they can borrow them to because uh, they're moving on the weekend. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I know that there's the thing, I guess, that excited me about that, about that comment, and that challenge was, you know, there are so many great, intelligent entrepreneurial contractors in our space that I can't wait to see how they're going to take that to heart and what's going to come out of this. Because I know there's some of you out there already, the wheels are turning and it's, it's just, man, I just, I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, despite all of that and, and talking about the different diversica diversification options, easy for me to say, you know, we're still here. We still bleed purple, Dad. That's the way that we like to say it, right? Yeah. We are here to, and we literally just get up out of bed in the morning to help you, our fellow contractors and potential investors, succeed and win in this space. And so that's always going to be our heart here and, and helping you win at that. So as, as we as we kind of go back into, okay, we have all these other things. What did we learn FedEx-wise and, 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 and how is our business is going to be affected by what's going on with the UPS strike and things like that? So let's kind of start tying this into, um, we'll start with the UPS strike, Dad, then we'll go into FedEx Express and sure. okay. some of the other things that we talked about. So the first thing that we can cover sort of to recap what happened the week before the expo was that, as you may know, the UPS strike was averted on July 25th. Uh, the Teamsters and UPS did reach a deal. Now, overall, this is a good thing for the economy. We're kind of looking at this as a net positive. There's going to, it's, it's kind of remains to be seen whether it's going to be a net positive for FedEx or kind of who's going to win this narrative battle between UPS saying there's higher wages deserved by delivery drivers. And then on, on the other side, FedEx kind of seeing how they respond to that. And so we're, we're really going to wait to see how it plays out. But overall, the fact that there was not a strike in, in, in general is a good thing because the supply yes. chain is not impacted. There was minimal movement over to FedEx ground. So contractors were not blown out with volume as we some of us kind of feared was going to happen. Yes, we like the extra revenue, but we're like, man, how can we staff up to this? It would be COVID on steroids is the way. Yeah, we absolutely. So. What it did was it also, and this is another thing that I think is a win for FedEx Ground, is it put a spotlight on the potential threat of future union strikes, right? I and mean, this is sure. going to happen every five years. We're going to see yep. this same cycle. And if we get more Sean O'Brien type of action, this <laughs> is going to be an ongoing thing where they just take it right down to the wire in order to draw publicity and to try to really strike a better deal for the union employees. So I think this is going to be interesting to see going forward. If we see more Sean O'Brien's in the pipeline, this could really get interesting as we go forward. 
Yeah, I wonder if we can get Sean O'Brien as our keynote speaker next year. It'd just be, I'd love to hear his insight just from a transportation standpoint, yes. you know, um, just to see kind of what went on behind the scenes and how that all went. Because, I mean, that was a, you know, I'm sure he learned and saw some things that, that would be pretty cool to hear insights from a, you know, from a logistics professional like him. Exactly right. Yeah, I'm sure Spencer's already on it. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I, I think the biggest thing of note with the UPS strike aversion was it really showed in clear terms that UPS drivers and their wages are far, far outpacing FedEx yeah. wages. I mean, it's not even close. I mean, in some yeah. cases, they're making well over twice what some of our FedEx ground drivers are making. That's all yeah. we can afford to pay them right now. So that's going to have ramifications, right? We're going to see a market correction in some form. You know, maybe right. it's UPS eating some margin in order to, to, to compensate for these higher wages. Um, maybe they have to raise their shipping, their shipping rates. Or maybe FedEx is the one that moves first and says, we really have to pay our contractors more to match this, right? So it's going to be interesting to see how that battle plays out. But either way, uh, it's going to be very interesting to, to, to watch as it does. And then the last thing is you're going to have drivers from FedEx Ground that are going to talk about this. And I've already seen it in the Facebook pages. They're already well aware the new rates for, for UPS full-time workers and part-time workers has been posted far and wide for everybody to see, including for FedEx ground drivers. It's going to be really interesting to see if they try to shift over to big ground instead of their contractor. Now, it's a very different world over there, right? It's, it's 10 Absolutely. plus hour days. They are compensated with overtime but they will most of the times push you right up until that 10 hour line. And they were there, they are measuring efficiency in ways that we can't even dream of right now. Yep. <laughs> so that's the UPS world. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a grind over there. And so I'm wondering if people are going to try to get in and number one, it's hard to get in. Right. But even if you do get in, how long will they stick if FedEx ground drivers do go that direction? So a lot of questions still to be answered in the upcoming months, but I think it's going to be really interesting to see how, how that all plays out. Yeah. I like the, I, I thought of the phrase when they, when, you know, that they came out with the, the $49 an hour, 102,000 or 122,000 a year they're going to make. And I immediately thought of Spencer's line that, uh, you know, rising tides raise all boats. Right. So I, I think this is going to be another, uh, you know, another action of that is going to, that's going to be the case. I think it's just going to be, whether it be, you know, I just, man, the, the pressure on the pricing pressure that, that UPS has put on themselves here is, um, is substantial. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. The unfortunate part for, for us in the, in the FedEx ground world is we went through a 12 month period of time where we saw the company raise rates three times, didn't pass a single dime of it on down to the contractor. That's what's, you know, you're wondering like, you know, surely, Maybe the fourth time will be a charm, but I, I just don't see Jesse. I agree with you. I think they're going to see that disparity and they're going to say, listen, we've got to, we've got to do something to, to allow our contractor base to, to remain, you know, somewhat competitive in the marketplace. Now, one thing I will say, and growing up in a small town, um, I have two very good friends, Jesse, I think I've told you this. I've told dozens of people this weekend that I graduated high school with that now, are getting ready to have their third and fourth joint replacement, having been lifetime UPS drivers. Uh, I mean, those guys get it, but you can't get in and out of a truck 200 times a day, 220 days a year for 25 years without paying the price. And then the second thing, if you remember when we were in Columbia, we worked for some people that was a driver and, and they put him on a stopwatch. Remember that? He's like, he was, you know, Brian was on pins and needles knowing that he's the next three days, someone's going to ride with him and put him on a stopwatch. And, and if he didn't do what he was supposed to do, then he was going to get thrown to another route. So, you know, it's not all, um, you know, it's not all it's made up to be either. So I think there's still, I can make, I think I can make a pretty solid argument for somebody that wants to jump ship over to that because, um, and then just the culture part, remember some, we talked to, that was our very last session Sunday. You know, some people, if the culture is right where they work, they'll work for less money because they like the culture. Um, and that's where I think, uh, if you haven't watched any of the sessions that we did, it was the last one we did. It was right before everybody's, you know, happy hour, getting on a plane to get out of town. But I think it was the best one that we did. Um, um, and I think that was one building company culture can lead to profits. That session is, is it was, it was funny at the end of the week, it was our favorite, right? 
It was. Yeah. I felt like we nailed it right at the end. I'm like, man, if we could have brought that same energy to these other ones and, you know, and, and I, I feel like we did find that. And we saw, I see some encouragement there in the, in the Q and a for us. And I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I mean, our culture one, I really felt like we did well and kind of wrapped it all up. That was a nice one to end on. Yeah. I really feel like so, but dad, let's get into the one where we blew the doors off. Literally. I, I, I do mean that literally yeah. they had to push the security guard outside the door to make sure nobody else got in. Cause it was, beyond capacity in Vendome B, where we were at the Paris Hotel talking about express integration. So that what what are some of your takeaways that, that we really, you know, we've done a lot of networking leading up to the expo. What are some of the highlights from that session so people can go watch and get the full story? What are some of the things we want them to know and walk away from? Yeah, sure. So we're going to, I'm going to hit the 10 positives. So we've got twice as many positives, Jesse, as we do negatives. So there's some downs that are challenges to this, but, uh, you know, it's going to be more volume. I mean, there's anybody in the world that you've been there. We've been to multiple buildings. We've talked to dozens of contractors. They're all saying the same thing that, you know, you're seeing a 15 to 20 percent increase in volume. And because of that additional revenue streams, it's not universal across the board, which is kind of a frustration as to some are getting an additional service charge, kind of a, a startup fee. Some are getting bonuses. Some are having to meet a threshold to get more money. Um, so there is going to be additional revenue. Um, it's, it's not going to be something and we it, it's hard for us to present in forums like this because we wish we could present things that we knew were uniform across the board. And so I will tell you, here are the things that are uniform. Uh, very few bulk stops. You know, I don't think there's a downside to that after what we've been through with all the ICs. 90% of it is small volume. Again, big win, right? 80% of it is business centric. So you're not going to be delivered a bunch of packages to a double wide trailer hanging off the end of a cliff at the far end of your delivery area. Um, and now we found out there's a 120 day on ramp warning. So you're going to know when your facility is going to that. So I think that's a real positive thumbs up to FedEx ground four months of, 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 of giving us the ability to get ready for it. Um, we've heard one to two week of, of a sandbox express, um, previous volume information that we can get to kind of see how it's going to affect us um, across the entirety of our CSA. That's a good thing. Uh, we saw many third-party vendors this weekend, Jesse, that have already um, cracked the code, if you will, and in, in the ability to really assist contractors in, in breaking down to a lot further extent of what DRO allows to see what that volume is. Um, by that time, we're going to have many more contractors, a bunch more getting ready to stand up on September the 4th of this year, you know, um, and so there's another group of people. We really encourage that this weekend to reach out to these guys that have already done it. You know, don't try to don't try to do it on your own. And then, um, you know, we're we're at it again. I've got a call um, tomorrow afternoon with a contractor that I have not yet spoken to. And then I made some great contacts, as I know you did with people that are in various stages of the, of the standup. So we're not sitting on our laurels here. We don't just do these, get information for you to help you just so we can uh, talk to you about it at, a, at an expo somewhere. We are on the grind constantly trying to improve, trying to educate ourselves so that we can educate you, the contractor on this. So in those 10, Jesse, that I just, just uh, bulletproof, you know, bullet listed there real quick that's, that stand out for you. Um, the one, only one I would mention here is going to be that sandbox volume, right? So this is, you know, being a DRO, this is this is the one I have to mention, right? So yeah, of course. you're going to see the impact of the express, the actual express volume that was delivered the week or two prior to when you stand up. You will get access to that data to kind of see what the impact to your operations will be. Now how much you're going to need to potentially scale up or not scale up. It'd be nice to have it a little bit earlier than that. Right. But sure. you will get access to see time definite deliveries and, and what's the real impact in terms of, you know, when do I have to be at what stops at what time you will get to see that data in the sandbox, which is going to be really, really nice. And that's something that they don't always do. Right. I mean, even right. if you're a new contractor standing up, you don't even always get access to the yeah. sandbox before. So having this, this is a really good, well thought out plan ahead type thing from FedEx to give us that data ahead of time. So be looking for that in your sandbox. And if you don't get that, talk to your P&D manager and see if they can give you access to that before you stand up with express volume. Absolutely. So let's talk about five challenges real quick. Then we'll talk about five solutions. So, you know, the time certain piece, Jesse, is going to be a real 
Um, you know, it's, it's going to be initially a potential drag on efficiency. You know, we talked about, you know, guys trying to understand how they can reroute their existing people to, you know, not have to drive by time sensitive stops. So they're, you're going to have to learn the balance. What, what is the phrase? I should have written this down. What is the phrase that the most creative carries the day or something? Yeah. Great most phrase. creative will get the trophy. Yeah that you came up with that. That's exactly the case. So, you know, guys are wrestling with this, but we're already seeing guys that are, that are struggling and that their guys are driving by their regular ground delivery stops in order to, to get some of the time sensitive done and having to return and, 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 and go back over it again. So it's going to, there's definitely a learning curve. Let's just say that that's certainly a challenge coming up. Um, the varied sort times are going to depend on your proximity to the, uh, um, to the airport where the where the uh, the packages come in on in the express network, that's not going to change as far as them being you know I'm dependent on on uh, coming by air where everything else obviously for us comes ground. Um, you're very familiar, Jesse, and I know you continue to monitor the DRO visibility piece um, uh, as that as that changes. But right now there is a limited DRO visibility on the night before, which is which is a challenge for sure. Um, and then probably the two biggest ones that I see for us to overcome are the early pickup return windows. So we've seen some contractors that those are as early as, as 4.30, um, that you have to have packages back to your station and get them back. And then the same day call in of pickups. And so there again, that's gonna, you're gonna have to use some creativity there. Maybe have a, you know, someone's gonna have to stay out obviously every day until that window closes to be able to get those on that day and get them back in. So those, those are the five challenges that we see um, that, that are coming up. Any, any comments on those? Yeah, the, the big one is gonna be the pickups. We're, we're just not used to these same day call-in pickups. Yeah. And this is one that's really, from the early data we've gotten, this is the one that has affected driver morale the most. Yes. And it's potentially caused any retention issues. This is the big one that's contributing to that. So just be aware of that. This is, a, as you said, that this is a major, major culture shift for your team. And, you know, this is going to be something to, to say, hey, it's, it's coming, right? We need to get in a mindset now of it's not just my route. When I get done, I go home. It's, hey, I might have to stay out and, and cover some other sweeps of pickups. I might need to stay out and make sure this one customer doesn't call in a pickup because, again, if they call it in same day, you've got to be there same day. So that, that's, that's going to be a big one to look at. Yeah. So solutions, we're all about solutions and I apologize. I wish, you know, I wish we'd have had 10 solutions for the 10, you know, that, that, than what we actually brought and we're working on more of them all the time. Um, but I think the first part of that I have to say without, without hesitation is the opportunity to tackle a new challenge. And if there's something that I, that I appreciate the most about working with the, the contractor base that we work with Jesse is, most of you all are just not afraid. In fact, you get up every morning ready to tackle a new challenge, right? Um, as Dave Ramsey said, it's the whole leave the cave, go kill it and drag it home mentality. And that's where I have no doubt. I have no doubt in my mind that some of you are going to crack this code. You're going to be wildly successful in this, in this new environment. And uh, so, you know, if you can view it as an opportunity to change and grow, um, you know, uh, embrace that, then uh, you're going to, you're going to be really, really successful. Um, we're going to have to use all the tools in our tool belt. You know, we've, we've been very open, Jesse, we've confessed that, you know, AVP has not really been a tool that we've, we've really considered much in our tool belt. Now that's going to have to be part of our strategy. Um, I like the phrasing that you had the, as you go by strategy, we're going to have to, we're going to have to incorporate that where a truck may have to drop packages off in bulk um, in a particular area, dense area, as he, as he or she are going to, a, to an additional area. So a lot of different strategies here that, uh, you know, we really need to uh, um, unbox the possibilities, okay, um, uh, if you will, to use a, a current phrase. So uh, three more really quickly. Super early pre preparation. You, you hit on that briefly. Start now. If I was a contractor right now, I would be preparing my people, even if I didn't know what the date was, I would let them know this is coming. We're going to keep you in the loop, but but get ready. This this is this is happening. Um, and then we're also learning that Express will most likely always have some type of a presence in most of our operations, right? In most of the buildings, It'll be limited, right? We've seen many that 
are still doing what they call the P1s, the early 8.30 time commit pieces. Um, there's many buildings that, you know, so that will be the new normal. That'll be uh, uh, FedEx 2.0, where you actually have ground and FedEx Express trucks in the same facility. And then, you know, there are going to be potential driver and truck resources that are available out there. Um, one of the things I haven't even had a chance to talk to you about, son, is the, is the guy that was in our express integration piece is actually the owner of the company that provides the, um, the safety, the vetter equipment for express trucks. They actually do real time coaching. Now, when I mean real time coaching, I mean, if there is an event where somebody is looking at their cell phone, they're going to get an alert. Okay. There's going to be a voice that's going to come on and talk to them as they're driving about the safety problem they're having. And they're seeing, you know, um, you know, they're seeing, I, I can't, he, he, he would not allow me to share the statistics, but it is a significant uh, decrease. He showed me a chart of accidents with UPS drivers, accidents with ground drivers, and accidents with e express drivers. It is significantly reduced hmm. with a program that, that this guy has. And I am super excited about the resources that are out there um, that are now Express is using is going to make our workforce a ton. I mean, I'm talking 30, 40 percent reduction in proven results of, of preventable accident reduction. I don't think there's a single person in the sound of my voice that wouldn't jump up and down and, and know they could reduce that. That is big time great news. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, just that instant coaching, that instant feedback. It's I can imagine that would go yeah. a long way. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 all great. Dad. And that was obviously the big thing that people were wanting to know is what's this express integration piece going to look like for my business? Uh, we've got some questions on that, which I'll get to uh, here in a second. But that as we kind of look ahead, uh, we've got Dallas next year. So if you didn't make it to Vegas this year, you want to hit Dallas next year or if you already did hit Vegas, uh, we will be in Dallas, Texas next year. That's going to be August 2nd through the 4th. Just like this past weekend, it's a Friday through Sunday. Uh, we don't have a venue announced yet, but rest assured, as soon as we know, we will pass that along to everybody here. Seems like a lifetime away, but as we know, it always sneaks up on us really fast. It'll be here before we know it. So, Dad, I'm looking forward to what this year ahead has. We have new products that we're coming out with and developing yep. all the time. So uh, let's let's get into this Q and A uh, and 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 see what we've got here. So absolutely, what a burger! And yep. Texas brisket barbecue. I can't wait. Oh, my yep. gosh. Trading in and out and Gordon Ramsay for Whataburger <laughs> and, and Texas barbecue. So be a nice change of pace here. So Jim Gilson, his answer is, and I like you, Jim, Arnold Palmer. I love that. Okay. Jim has a few questions here. Let's go ahead and get okay. through here. So Jim asked, and Dad, you hit on this, so I'll let you take this one. What is the September 4th date that you mentioned? What were you talking about there? So that's going to be the next wave of express integration. So there's multiple buildings. I don't know exactly how many. My guess is if it's like other waves, it'll probably be somewhere in the 20 to 30 building range um, that are actually already have been, they're inside that 120 day window, Jesse, that we mentioned that they're giving um, the uh, ramp up warning. And so we all, we've talked to several contractors that are, uh, that are in that, uh, are in that window. Um, ironic, well, I'm okay. I'm not going to say that, but anyway, um, <laughs> they were very appreciative of the information that we gave them in relation to the information they'd received from their senior manager. I'll just yeah. leave it at that. Very well, very, very <laughs> diplomatically put there, dad. Uh, Jim's second question is what again is the anticipated growth rate with adding express from a revenue perspective? And this is going to vary Jim, but the range we've seen is about five to 15% additional revenue. Uh, in terms of what you're bringing in with this express flying. Now, big caveat there. Well, there's multiple caveats there, but one that I'll say, if you're primarily a rural territory, then you're probably not going to see as much growth as you would if you have a lot of businesses. Because as you mentioned, Dad, there's a lot of these express time-sensitive deliveries that are going to businesses. That's the bread and butter sort of of that market. Absolutely. So if you've got a lower urban area, more just neighborhoods and rural, you're not going to see as much of an impact, but that, that can be good and bad, right? It can cut both ways because if you don't have the extra density, 
Uh, you'll miss out on the density, but you won't miss out on potentially having to add resources to cover the time sensitive aspect of getting these express deliveries done. So it's going to cut both ways, right? So just, just yeah. be aware, 5 to 15% is kind of the range we're seeing. And the high range of that, Jesse, when I talk to contractors that have already done this, is if you have a high, uh, like a medical sector, those are going to be super high. Yes. And if you have a high technology sector. So if you're in an area where you have a lot of businesses that are medical and that are technology, um, you know, IT related, those are getting a lot more by nature. Their businesses get a lot more overnight things from Express. So those are going to have a tendency to be higher. And as you mentioned, the lower end are going to be the, the more extremely rural areas. Yep. Ben Eisenhower, his answer is Southern style sweet tea. All right. And let me give you a quote here. It says, uh, Jason Smith, uh, just pulled this quote up uh, when Jesse and I were mentioning this. I like my tea like my 90-year-old grandma makes. It's so sweet, it makes your cavities hurt. <laughs> I can feel that as you say that. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So Ben asked, he says, Jesse, I was able to attend your DRO session. Outstanding job from both you and your dad. Thank you so much, Ben. He asked, do you have a direct email contact for questions pertaining to that session? Absolutely. So, John, could you throw my email in the chat for everybody? Jesse.smith at plogink.com. You can check the chat to get that and uh, email me with whatever questions you have. I'll answer them as I can. Now, that the, I do offer paid products for DRO consulting. So if we're talking really in depth, um, I don't know how much I can answer just with a quick email, but we can definitely set up a time to get a consultation on, on the board there. Next one here, Anonymous, RC Expo is in Dallas 2024, the dates, and again, if you missed that, Anonymous, that's August 2nd through 4th next year, and his answer is, his or her answer is Sweet Tea, so that's two votes for Sweet Tea so far. Next one is from Jesse Ramos, he has just a quote from Kevin O'Leary here, which is, this one was one of my favorites too, Jesse, I think he meant to put data is the new oil by Kevin O'Leary, which is, that's, that's one of the ones he opened right. with a great line. He talked about gathering yep. customer, uh, consumer data from direct to customer shipping, which is really kind of the new wave of commerce. And we're seeing some brick and mortar shut down because people are going direct to consumer. Just that's the wave of the future. COVID brought it in and it's here to stay. So great, great comment there, Jesse. That's, that's exactly right. Next one from Felix. Felix, I don't know how to say your last name. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, great question from Felix. Any insights around how line haul will be impacted from express integration? I've heard freight will take over, but not sure about others. Dad, you want to hit that one? Yeah, we actually are blessed to have some people in-house at, uh, at Route Consultant who have very close relatives of theirs that actually work for freight. And some are in, um, well, in fact, both of them are in management with FedEx Freight. And so uh, we have heard it said, and, I, and I've actually... Uh, from a contractor, um, a line haul contractor that I talked to that, that broached this with um, um, when they went to the Pittsburgh meeting and said that right now, the way it stands, most of the runs they think can be better served by either express or freight from a cost per mile per package. That's what it's all going to come down to. You know, there's a lot of debate on the, on the Facebook page, Jesse, you've seen it, where people are like, is my market going to be all express? Is it going to be all ground? It's all going to be based on what does it cost? What is the cheapest cost per mile per package to get it delivered? That's what. That's why Canada, Hawaii, and Alaska are what they are. That's why other cities, there's going to be places across our country, you know, and that's where, you know, from here again, let me be a FedEx apologist for a short period of time. You know, why would they not, if they have a chance to make more money in one system versus the other, they have the flexibility to do that. So um, that's how that's going to be. For what we're hearing, um, it's not the line haul side of FedEx Ground is probably not going to be the first choice for hauling this additional freight with Express, but it's probably going to be existing Express um, line haul as well as uh, the, because, uh, you know, we know that, that freight is down. They've been laying people off. So there's going to be, you know, they definitely have some additional room to take up some volume there. Yeah. And you got to think about this, too. I mean, the current express line haul drivers are going into very sensitive, secure areas like airports, right, to get this, mm -hmm. this hot freight that's coming in. That's going to be a pretty big culture shift for, for these typical FedEx ground line haul guys 
to get badged and just to get all yep. the things they need to go on site at these 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 terminals. So I can imagine if it does happen, it'll be a little ways down the road. But I think that's 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 all right. What you said there, Dad. Yeah. Um, Jim, he has a couple other comments here. Jim Gilson, I live 45 minutes from Arnie's personal courses. Wow, that's really cool. Okay. Uh, he's looking into acquiring 25 routes. So Jim, we'd love to help you with that. I'm not sure if you've reached out to anybody here on our consulting team, uh, but absolutely, if you've not done that, reach out to us here. Um, John, can you put a, a link here in the chat for, for someone who's interested, maybe just a generic consulting question they can fill in, you know, whether where they're from and we can get them connected with the, uh, with the right consultant. Uh, Anonymous says, Arnold Palmer for sure. We are doing a payroll audit. We use ADP for payroll and they have a great mix of reports. Is there one that you are aware of that is the best report to pull for the summary payroll information? Anonymous, that's a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, you can also email us here, info at rockconsultant.com. Someone will, will see that question and can probably get you that info. It's not my wheelhouse. That I know it's not yours. Do you happen no. to know the answer to that? Okay. Yeah, just two, two words here. for that. Peggy Johnson. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just just email us here. We someone here will get you the answer to that. I just don't know it myself. Next one is from Tyler Harris. His answer, Dad, you got a fellow in here. Unsweet tea. That a boy, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Here's what we say. So I lived in the South for 17 years. Here's a quote I pulled up that you'll get a kick out of. Here in the South, we don't hide crazy. We parade. We parade it on the front porch and give it a sweet tea. <laughs> yep i've seen it bro i've seen it oh man tell me you're from alabama without telling me you're from alabama right there That's right. so tyler asked several questions here number one why the addition of bread routes to the businesses line up with rc does rc now or in the future broker bread routes i'm just going to go ahead and take those first real quick Tyler. Yeah, sure. um yes and yet well the first one is we're doing this because i think it's an easy segue from the current from your current business with FedEx to use your capacity on your trucks. A lot of the same size vehicles are used for bread routes. So if you are looking to add extra capacity, like Kevin O'Leary said at the expo, this is kind of a shoe in way to do it. So obviously you're going to have to get your own business from a bakery, um, get a driver if you don't know if it doesn't come with a driver, but it's the same size trucks. And so if you have a spare vehicle or two that you want to use for this, it's, yeah. it's, it's a shoe in. So basically just cover up your FedEx logos and you're able to use this however you want. So I think it's just a nice dovetail in with current FedEx businesses, I think is one of the main things we, we saw in it. And the answer to the second question is yes, we do currently actually broker some bread routes. So if you're interested in a particular market, please get with us and, and we can do some digging and see if we can find something in that market for you, if that's something you want to look into. So we're just on the cusp of that. So that's right. going to be... You know, you're going to see, obviously, there's only a limited number of FedEx ground contractors where we're just now beginning to tap that market. So, so get, get ready. If that's what you want. Then yes. we can, yep, we can help you. He, he then asks, uh, do you see a way to centralize and or capitalize bread routes? Um, can, Tyler, can you kind of give me some, some more info on what you mean by that third question? I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Um, and then will the slides from the expo be, be available? They are not available on the training site courses. John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, Tyler, I don't believe that the, the slides themselves will be available. I believe they were available in the app for its right. ideas, but I don't think they're available on our website. So just the recordings, looking at the speaker, and if you can see any slides on the camera shots in the videos, you might see them there. But otherwise, I don't believe we've made the slides available. Yeah, I know okay. the slides. I, I he, he does say they are available. They are. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we do have those. So good questions there, Tyler. Uh, Jim, he asked another question. I live in Pittsburgh. What was the Pittsburgh meeting reference? Dad, what were you talking about there? Uh, somebody went up earlier this year. They had a, they had several contractors come in for the uh, for the metals or whatever meeting um, that that's I forget when that was earlier in the year. Jesse, I don't know. It was in February or yes. March. They just had a, a group of contractors that they invited up. I think they were primarily the gold. Um, I think I think the gold forum was in April, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, yeah, that that was the meeting when they went up there to uh, to that. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then, and that's one thing that I'll just say as a side note is very encouraging. I've seen from FedEx Ground lately is 
I think in large part due to Spencer's efforts over the last year and, and, and prior, FedEx has really opened up their ear to the contractor. Now, whether we see that translate into actionable items is kind of TBD, but we've seen more openness from FedEx to at least bring contractors in to say, what do you have to say to us than, than I've ever noticed in the network yet. I don't know about you, but I mean, it's yeah. been pretty spectacular the amount of times they brought contractors in. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, read a quote. I was looking at some quotes uh, um, over the weekend about safety, driving safely. And it says, uh, um, it does no good to read the road signs if you don't obey them. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't make you safer just by reading them, right? Uh, and, and just because you have meetings and you talk about things, you acknowledge the problems that are going on. So I really hope that, uh, you know, and, and here again, this goes back, Jesse, to where our heart lies every single day is with our fellow contractors that are out there. So I hope that not only are they listening, but they're really paying attention and making it a, make a difference because these are truly, um, uh, and I learned it again this weekend. I mean, th these are the greatest people in the world to, uh, to, to do business with. It's just, they're just fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, everybody. There's no more questions. I'll give you about 20, 30 more seconds here. If you got a last minute one, if you want to sneak it in, but if not, we will go ahead and wrap up. I do want to say, if I did see you at the expo, it was terrific meeting you and seeing you guys again. I saw contractors that I had never met in person, but I had talked to, whether it's through our QualCert courses or just in whatever capacity. It was really great to see all of you. I cannot wait for next year. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if uh, if we're going to get as many sessions next year, Dad. We, we've not knocked us dead this year, but um, needless to say, we came home just very much spent, but in, in such a good, good, fulfilled way. So you got one, one more yep. quote before you take the last question. Sweet yep. tea, the house wine of the South. <laughs> That's right on. That is right on. <laughs> All right, Jim, with the last minute one here for a long standing route, what is average year over year growth? Uh, Jim, I hate to say, I hate to be a cop out here, but that sh it's just a little bit too broad of a question to answer because it really depends so much on how well you're able to operate the business. I mean, there's so many variables that go into, if you're talking about a P&D route, there's so much that goes into that. Um, market hiring conditions, there's just a lot that could affect that. So I'd say in general, we're seeing somewhat slowed since COVID, but you know, I, I just, it's going to really vary market to market. So dad, do you have any more insight on, on what we might say there? Yeah. And it would depend on the type of route too, right, Jesse? I mean, if you're, if you're in a, you know, an area and, and then there's going to be some economic forces that are going to, to determine that as well. I mean, if you live in, in Illinois, there's a lot of areas where people are just, you know, they're just vacating it. Okay. I mean, imagine being a contractor servicing downtown San Francisco, where it's just, you know, the businesses are just, you know, flooding out of there very, very quickly. So yeah, there's just too many variables right there. But overall, if you, if you continue to look at the upward pace of the of what's happening overall in the FedEx ground network, that march continues. Now it's not at that torrid 12 to 15% growth rate that we saw for many, many years in a row, but it, it does continue to climb overall, you know, but there, you know, you could always pick out individual ones that are, that are beating that because it's an average, right? There's so those that are beating that and those that are not, that are not measuring up to that. So, um, you know, that would be, uh, that'd be, that'd be a really tough one to nail down. Yeah, and, and, and the, the market valuations kind of bear that out, Jim. I mean, so if you look at your, your Florida markets, your Colorado markets, Texas, yeah. these are all very, these are typically more expensive businesses because of the growth that is occurring in those areas. So just you, you will see it based on kind of the, the, the movement of the population. But in general, in terms of, you know, new shippers being brought into the network, the, one, of the, one of the beautiful things about the FedEx Crown Network is that it is so stable. So in general... Yeah. E-commerce is not going anywhere. Right. So we are seeing a fairly steady growth trend. It's just not explosive like it was a few years ago when, when yeah. we had COVID and all that. So, uh, Jim, we look forward to seeing you here in a couple of weeks. It looks like you're going to be attending our summit. So looking Sweet. forward to seeing you. Yep. And uh, everybody else, thank you so much for being here. And we will see all of you next week.